<clears throat> okay, today we're going to look at what, how adding and subtracting fractions work and uh, see if we can um, figure out exactly why you do the things you do, you know? Let's see here. The well, first question we have is we're looking at when you add two thirds plus one half. Well, this picture here should look like two thirds of this rectangle. We actually, um, we could break the rectangle into three parts and two parts. So that represents two out of three. I could cut the rectangle this way. And this green uh, section would represent one half of the whole rectangle. Well, there's the two fractions. But if you want to combine them, if you want to add them, what you have to do is you have to break the, the rectangle up the same way. And if we break it up the same way, if we divide the rectangles the same way, we're really getting a common denominator. Let's look at what we do here. Um, if we have, uh, this is in thirds and this is in halves. If we take this three and we multiply it by two, we get six, one six. So if we break this rectangle, so it's broken into thirds, if we cut it in half, we'll break it into six parts. This one's cut in half. And if we break it into um, three parts, we'll see we'll have broken the whole thing into six parts. Well, now you can look at it. You can see that two over three is really the same as four out of six. And one half is the same as three out of six. Once you've got a common denominator, all you have to do is write down the common denominator and you can see how many six you have. There's four yellow ones, three green ones, four plus three is seven. People memorize what to do, but they don't always understand why it's working. And so there is a quick way of, of always coming up with the right answer. You can actually find the product of these two numbers here will always give you the fraction on the bottom, the six there. And then if you cross multiply, that two times two gives you this four, and three times one gives you that three, and then you just add them up. If we're looking at subtraction, well, it's just exactly the same way. We have to, if we had two thirds minus a half, we'd still need to look for the common denominator. We'd have to break this rectangle into six parts. And this one with the green, we'd break it into six parts. Now we're taking four, we're subtracting three, or there'd just be one left. And so uh, also the same thing, three times two, we get six in the bottom. If we cross multiply, it'd be two times two minus three times one. Okay, we've got some questions. So that should help you to understand why you always look for a common denominator when you subtract or add fractions. The first um, four questions in the exercises are pretty straightforward. You just do exactly what I did in the example there. This question, these questions are, are a little bit different. It's when you um, subtract or when you're adding them, you end up with a negative number. So you've got to think about your number line. You can check it with a calculator, but you should really try and think through it. You still get the common denominator the same way, but when you go, seven times three minus five times five, you won't get a positive answer. Here, I did a video on a mixed to improper fractions. You may want to look at it again. Um, we have to change these mixed fractions into improper fractions. Uh, that's the, 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 the best way to do um, um, this mixed fraction here with these subtractions. Okay, well, good luck with that. And I hope the video helped. Okay.